The date is August 8th, 2004. A guy under the name Fluffy Dog and a high-flying referee with a Santo mask on took part in their very first professional wrestling match. Fast forward 16 years later, and those two are tag team champions in their own promotion. The Young Bucks have been through it all during their journey in the pro wrestling world. Their love for the sport was apparent from a very young age, when they would imitate moves that they saw on TV in their backyard ring. Matt was the one who took it one step further and attended a wrestling school, and trained under Ron Rivera, Disco Machine, Scorpio Sky, and Super Dragon, to name a few. Since the two brothers are inseparable, Nick followed soon after, and they made their debut on the date we mentioned earlier. Despite wrestling in chicken costumes, under the name Los Gallineros, the Bucks were determined to carve their own unique path in wrestling. And this became clear from a very young age. In October of 2004, Matt, with the help of his family, opened up his own promotion, High Risk Wrestling. It was under this promotion that Matt and Nick polished their craft, got the name The Young Bucks, the surname Jackson, and an opportunity to take the next step in their careers with NWA. High Risk Wrestling came to an end in 2009. As you can see, Matt and Nick always wanted to have their own company, but they would have to travel a world for more promotions than I can count to achieve that. The next step on the Bucks' roller coaster of a journey was Pro Wrestling Gorilla. During the first part of their run with the company, they mixed it up with the Dynasty, Los Luchas, Phoenix Star, and Zocra, and others. A Dragon Gate tour followed. Like in the case of Kazuchika Okada, time away from home was beneficial for the Bucks. When they returned from the Dragon Gate tour, the two brothers finally got one over Dynasty and set their eyes on the PWG tag team titles. On the second night of All-Star Weekend 7, they defeated the Age of the Fall, Jimmy Jacobs and Tyler Black, aka Seth Rollins, and thus a historic reign began. Over the next 616 days, the Young defended the titles 15 times, going up against top names of the industry, such as Kenny Omega, Brian Danielson, Roderick Strong, Chuck Taylor, Kevin Steen, and El Generico. Their run ended at the hands of El Generico and Paul London at 2010 DDT4, but the Bucks were far from over in PWG. While climbing the ladder of success in Southern California, the two brothers entered one of the darkest chapters in their career, but more of that in a minute. Three more tag team championship reigns and two versions of Mount Rushmore followed for the Young Bucks in PWG. They were cornerstones of the promotion, and they gave the fans top-notch wrestling and plenty of unforgettable moments. The first version of Mount Rushmore with Adam Cole and Kevin Steen was as star-filled as it was entertaining. But most importantly, PWG represented the essence of the Young Bucks, two guys who love pro wrestling and want to do things in their own unique way. We often do so much to reach our goals. We put in the hours, we work, we sacrifice things, but sometimes when we finally achieve our goal, it's not what we thought it would be. Unfortunately, that was the case for the Young Bucks when they signed with TNA back in 2009. TNA changed everything about them. They were given new singles names, Max and Jeremy Buck, and a new tag team name, Generation Me. The two brothers spent a large part of their first year in the company wrestling singles matches, and when they were wrestling as a tag team, they could get past the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin. As the saying goes, things get worse before they get better. And looking at the run of the Young Bucks in TNA, I think this quote fits perfectly. That's because after a mediocre first year with the company, they signed a new two-year deal. Once again, TNA Creative viewed the two brothers more like singles wrestlers than a tag team. Friction between Max and Jeremy followed, and a brotherly feud loomed over their heads. After two singles matches, which saw Max winning both of them, Generation Me split in the April 7th episode of Impact, with Max blaming Jeremy for trying to steal his spotlight. His singles run, though, wasn't particularly successful, as he failed to capture the TNA X Division Championship. The two bounced back and forth from singles to tag team, essentially losing every direction they had within the company. This dark period in their careers finally came to an end at the 2011 edition of Destiny X, where Generation Me was defeated by the team of Eric Young and Sharkboy. That night, the Bucks had their last match with TNA, and the following day, Matt and Nick requested their releases. 
They later revealed that the request stemmed from monetary issues, while also venting their frustrations with TNA's booking, noting the storyline with Tara, which went nowhere, and the quickly aborted feud between the brothers. Matt has also stated that after leaving TNA, he was ready to quit professional wrestling altogether before he and his brother decided to instead reinvent themselves. The company took away their identity, to be honest. They took away their names, and they took away the most important thing in their careers, each other. Matt and Nick thought that they have reached the top of a mountain, and that everything from that point on would have been easy. But the higher you fly, the harder you fall. The Bucks are two guys with huge hearts and a fighting spirit that doesn't go away easily. The comeback journey to the top had begun. The Young Bucks needed a place where they could be themselves again, and that place was Ring of Honor. They signed with the company back in 2009, but their initial run was cut short because of their TNA contracts. Once they were out of those though, they returned and immediately set their sights on the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles. Despite struggling at the beginning, Matt and Nick eventually defeated Red Dragon to win the tag team titles for the first time. Two more title reigns followed, and also a feud with a tag team that the Young Bucks grew up watching, the Hardy Boys. The main difference with TNA is that Ring of Honor put the Young Bucks in meaningful storylines, in storylines that made them happy, and they were definitely relieved. And also, the contract that they gave them allowed the Bucks to wrestle in NJPW as well. And like the sun which rises in the east, the Young Bucks rose in the east as well. October 15th, 2013. It was on this date when the Young Bucks announced that they were headed to New Japan. They took part in the 2013 Super Junior Tag Tournament, representing Bullet Club, and it didn't take them long to show the Japanese audience what they could do. Matt and Nick won the tournament and then proceeded to win the Junior Tag Team titles. A dominant run in New Japan was on the horizon. Over the next five years, the two brothers dominated the junior tag team division, winning the title seven times, a record. In Bullet Club, Matt and Nick were cornerstones. It was the Bucks that kicked out Prince Devitt, the stable's first leader. It was the Bucks, alongside Kenny Omega, that kicked out AJ Styles, the second leader. Every Bullet Club leader had the support of the Young Bucks, which says a lot about their influence within the club. Kenny Omega was no exception and three formed the Elite, a subgroup within Bullet Club. Little did they know that this subgroup will lead to one of the biggest events in wrestling in the last 20 years. But as with the rest of their careers, this friendship had its ups and downs. The darkest times were when Cody Rhodes turned them against each other, and you can check that in our other videos about Cody. The link will be in the description. But despite that, those three find a way to make it work proving that their friendship is one of the strongest in wrestling. But it was this friendship that led them out of the Bullet Club. The Bullet Club OGs rebelled against Kenny Omega and the Elite, essentially kicking them out of the stable. Before the final goodbye though, the Young Bucks alongside Cody and the rest of the Elite laid the foundation of a brand new promotion via the All In event. More about that in the videos about Cody, which we talked about earlier. The Young Bucks went through it all in New Japan and Bullet Club. They were caught between civil wars, Omega vs Cole and Omega vs Cody. They set records in the junior tag team division. They moved up to the heavyweight division, grabbing the tag titles there as well, and so much more. But most importantly, they elevated NJPW, making the company famous all over the world through Bullet Club. As in the case of Ring of Honor, New Japan gave Matt and Nick freedom. The one thing they want the most in wrestling, I think. And when you give the Young Bucks freedom, only good things happen. Those two will go down as NJPW legends, and rightfully so. In late 2018, Cody, Kenny, The Bucks and Adam Page left ROH and later on NJPW as well. All Elite Wrestling was a reality. They signed five-year deals with the company and they are two of the EVPs of AEW. 15 years after high-risk wrestling, Matt and Nick had their own company once again. Their achievements in AEW were more or less known to the fans and maybe it'll be the subject of another video. As far as this video goes, the journey of the Young Bucks was a long and hard one, but they never lost sight of what they really want, to do things in their way.
And most importantly, they didn't forget those who helped them throughout their careers. Many of the guys who are working now in AEW have crossed paths with the Bucks over the years. They are friends all over the world. That tells a lot not only about what kind of professionals Matt and Nick Massey are, but also about what kind of people they are. Now, as the AEW Tag Team Champions, they'll continue to change wrestling. That's the one thing Matt and Nick are doing best. Thanks for watching.